In the magazine Ciudad, published in Madrid, it was issue number four, on, started on page five. This was published the 16th of January, 1935. Was this interview with the great guitar maker Santos Hernandez by Eduardo Blanco Amor, who was the chief magazine editor. It was entitled, A New Guide of the Artisan Santos the Guitar Maker. The sketch of Santos is by an artist named Cristobal Arteque. Santos says he spends four months to make an artistic guitar, the most uh, complicated instrument that he produces. I want to break away from the interview before I conclude it and state that you have three different levels. The fastest way you make a guitar is to have a single liner attached in the back and the sides to the top. And the second way is to have a series of separate kerfing pieces attached in the top to the sides and to have a single liner attached in the back to the sides. The most complicated, the most time consuming one for the artistic guitars, top of line instruments is to have separate kerfing pieces attaching the top to the sides and to have separate kerfing pieces attaching the back to the sides or what we call a cut kerfing liner. It's a continuous strip but upon looking at it with the light inside the guitar you can see that there's all these separate cuts but that there's maybe a 64th of an inch of wood that keeps it as a solid liner though it's cut and that allows it to uh, go all around the guitar and bind it and hold it and offer the most resonance, power, and tone. So in the middle of the interview, Santos said he spends four months to make a guitar. So I'm going to start. It says, towards the middle of the Calle de la Aduana, there's a little room full of eminent shavings unnamed trunks and the fine wooden planks that are ready to receive spirit and verb. Dead vegetables awaiting the resurrection of their flesh, transubstantiated in melody and rhythm, outstanding tools for the outstanding craftsmanship of a trade that is a rhythm and liturgy. And in the midst of this chaos, what is going on to become a cosmos, a man from Madrid for the whole world towards whom they look with their cyclops eye, with mother of pearl eyelashes, soundboards of unborn guitars waiting for the skeleton of the mast that gives them the backbone of destiny, the hips of the box, which will one day be fertilized with songs, the back for the warm love of the artist's heart, and the tongues of fire, celestial sounds of the strings, which have to speak in a trembling and multiple language hot and charming dances from Cuba, slippery tangos del Rio de la Plata, agitated and gallant Guadalajarans from Mexico, sad emaciated like stones from the Andean highlands, born before in the macabre hollow of the Kenya, Mozartian minuets, dusty and conceptual like poet, poetic courtiers, Bach's figures, J.S. Bach, wonderful composer, isn't he? Theological, profoundly human, and exhausting of wisdom, and invisible dances of the duende, stitching in raw and snare drums, lean fandanguillos in suites of light, and the solia like a virgin lost in tears, nights in velvets, and the cigadilla soft and sharp, at the same time, like a sweet stinging that comes to us in the specter of a dream from the one to whom we said, neither with you nor without you, my ills have a remedy. Because Santo Fernandez's little room borders geographically with the sound continents and spiritually with the underworld of what never dies, even if it is, if it dies, nor has it to do with time, arranging as it does goods of eternity, the art. 
Eduardo Blanco says, Santos in that box pointing to a shipping carton. Santos says, it's going to Mexico. And the other one? That's going to the United States. The country of the demonic technique which stole from the myths the creative faculty of light, the waves of air, and the taming of fire pays homage to Santos Hernandez, a Spanish craftsman who scrapes his spruce soundboard with primitive steels. If the skyscrapers that gloat in their narcissism of 10,000 eyes adoring themselves in the greasy mirrors of the Hudson, were they to pass through this Iduana street, they would have to greet Santos, his little cubbyhole shaking off the clouds to the ground. The clouds, the only plumed hat that consents to its harsh arrogance of glass and steel. And everything here is sauce and an allusion to the trade, to the trade practiced with that ancient and natural dignity that carved the Romanesque capitals and the Gothic virgins, broken at the waist with their pregnant and exquisite sprain and the complicated inlays, quote unquote, in whose fine work they spent the eyes, quote unquote. And everything acquires a timid and submissive continent, a counterfigure to the petulance of the machine. In the face of the central argument of the workshop, that is, that it is man, and an old air too. The electric bulb pampers the reddish flame of the candle like this gasoline stove. Unusually perched on a table, it brings to mind something of those old raincoats that served to loosen the surviving buttocks of 19th century grandmothers. In other times, pink and pompous uh, foundations of the crinoline or the collected in dovetail. The alarm skirmishes in silence against some iron stretches that are there. Finally, I ask, but Santos, a machine in this place? More or less, it is to save not time, which God gives for nothing but the useless efforts. Be careful, friend, that's how barbarism began. The day you submit this For real white meat of the trees, to the cogwheels of technology, your guitars in just revenge will gargle that dirty and scratchy shame of the sounds exhaled by the loudspeakers. Actually, there is no reason to be alarmed. The device is nothing more than the foot of a sewing machine provided with a wheel polished in I don't know what arcane necessities of this arcane science of guitar making. The constant parade of people through the store does not stop me from threading the thread of my report. Two girls enter. Hello, Santos. Can you give us two first strings? The girls leaning against the counter engage in a long professional gossip with the craftsmen. They are two amateur guitarists, he informs me later. Rosarito Huidibro and Trinidad Garcia Aguado. We chat, I open my questions in a fan so that Santos, a little loquacious man, chooses his answers. He was not always of the same trade. At the age of 10, Santos exercised the apprenticeship of one who was a wonderful name. Nothing less than gold shooter. I don't know what it is about, but he has an object twinkling and glittering jupas of the national holiday, and from the age of 10 to 50-something of today to make guitars, many guitars and to send them flying around the world, like great calendars of trembling wood, so that one day the erudite luthiers will curve over the round open mouth, the sound hole, waiting for the name of Santos to answer, like from the oblique corners of some violins come out fished by the line of the ark, the names of Stradivarius of Guarnerius. And here in Spain, who do you work for? Eduardo Blanco says. Santos answers first with his eyes, and I see them illuminated by content and fair pride. When he timidly plays the answer card in a three-plane classification 
with priority given to the subconscious. And that is why it is the flamencos who lead the way in this categorization. Santos says, well, for all the flamencos from Ramon Montoya on down, I make guitars. Of the classical guitarists, for Sainz de la Maza, Sanchez Granada, Daniel Fortea, Miguel Angel, but for Miguel Yobet and Emilio Pujol have, until now, used Taurus instruments. Very good, yes, magnificent. Taurus, who was my teacher, and also Enrique Gar Garcia's teacher from Barcelona. And what was the last well thought of? And what was the last well thought out guitar that came out of your hands? It was for San, uh, Saints de la Masa, he says, with affectionate respect. Do you like Saints de la Masa? I asked him capriciously, of course. Who, Regino? He looks at me like I'm asking him how many arms he has. Regino, come on, man. What is the excellence of the sound of a guitar? Santos goes and picks up a venerable relic, relic that is hanging from a thread on the wall and is ready to give me that lesson of things that journalistic hustlers receive in each report. And this is what is called a soundboard, the wooden plate that covers the body of the guitar that makes its face. It is everything. Everything, my friend Santos, and so everything, that the great Taurus has built one out of cardboard except for the soundboard, which was, as always, of spruce. And you had to see how it sounded, and that they called her nothing less than La Leona. I still ask him about the followers of his art. I would like to see him surrounded by attentive little apprentices, open-eyed, respectful, respectful, calling him with a catechumenal anointing teacher. Santos is not an elegiac man who cries over the ruins of a noble trade that is going away. Like everything noble, his voice is not veiled in sadness, but he, he is edged with irony. Now there's a rush for everything. As soon as a kid thinks he knows something, he's on his own, Santos says. Sometimes they fall into the factories, which is like disappearing. The factory is the factory, whether guitars are made or fans are made there. This is a slow and sometimes thankless job because one always works like a puzzle. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not. The boys of today do not have patience for those things. Eduardo Blanco says, does it take long to make a guitar? Santos responds, depending on the weather or rather the temperature, one goes and glues. The pieces are there waiting. If the weather is wet, you cannot work safely. More or less, I can tell you that one guitar with another, they take me about four months each. Four months, Hernandez? How will a machine make that in time? How many will a machine make in that time? Yes, but it so happens that I'm not a machine, fortunately for us and you. And tell me, the, que the question entangles its hook in the small rumors of some flamencos that come in full of lisping chatter. A semicircle of discussion opens with saddle chairs and sparks of southern speech. The blind old man who came to sell the winning ticket of the Noche de los Tres Reyes left wishing for the same New Year's happiness, the same as in the escape days of yore inhabited by a man's double-breasted top coat and mustaches from the times of Sagasta. He navigates the flamenco conversation in his swallow's arbitrariness, bordering on the old years in a long-lived and lively voyage of evocations. Doubts and tricks wink the lip, headlights of the cigarettes. Santos puts among the gallant flowers of the hectic speeches passion flower of his gallant leg, which brings him bad these days with the bites of rheumatism. Arteke, with a mountaineering of trained pencils, is climbing his profile. He lowers the ledge of the forehead, falls into the hollow of the brow, 
climbs the flat hill of the nose, fords the furrow of the lips and transfixing the chin, falls down on the side of the neck into the wide valley of the craftsman's chest. The flamenco scavenged their ancient graces, always reborn by the freshness of the Andalusian tongues, soft with the wet lisp, pruned from the thorns of the Iberian jacks. I amuse myself by going through a small photographic museum attached to the wall. Some cardboard mounted on others, others tortured with tacks. There is Pacalucena, the most justly famous of the old Hondo cultists, with his tufts, his toupee, and his face somewhere between a bullfighter and an ecclesiastic. A guitarist, Hammond French, who writes to Santos calling him a musée. Miguel Yobet as a young man with a beaked and pale profile like a clever little barber. Targa with his hairy mug, his hairy forehead, his hairy fingers hugging the guitar with a great dark solemn and fluffy bug that is devouring something very tender. La Argentinita, eternal and matte like the other illustrious parchments. Goya in those days, alas when she was thin. Regino Sainz de la Maza through one of those photogenics with which they cozy up to in America. Segovia leaning out of the windows of his binoculars, tawny with ancestral manes, amateur paintings, horrid ensembles of academic children, and perhaps in these dedications is the best story of the Spanish craftsman who borders on the world.